Hi, I'm Mr. Heinrich with Tactical Tech, and today I'll be going over the basics of Excel spreadsheets. Now this is meant for the absolute Excel spreadsheet beginner. What I'll be covering is generally going to be formatting and equations involved with the Excel spreadsheet, bring you up to speed in a pretty short amount of time. What I'll be using is a spreadsheet of fake people in a fake tune that a fictitious platoon sergeant has told me to format and get some totals of number of guard hours, an average number, an average PT score for the APFT, and the total number of uh, C CFC contributions for each squad. Now I have all the raw data already put on this Excel spreadsheet. Now I just got to make it look pretty. First thing I'll be doing is uh, readjusting the column widths of each of these. You see in some of these they have way too much space and in other ones they actually cut off words. I can do that just by clicking the row I want to adjust and adjust it manually just like that or I can actually double click it and it automatically adjust it just like I will with this one. Another thing to make it really easy for you is just highlight all the rows you want to adjust wait for it to become that split icon with the mouse pointer and double click it and it'll automatically adjust it all. What I want to do next is define a table header. So on the first column above the headers I'll just click that row, right mouse, insert and it creates a new row. I'm going to paste a title in here and I want this title to be centered over the top of this entire table. So I'll select all the cells that I'm essentially going to merge in order to do that. Hit the merge and center and it automatically centers it for me. Now to make this even more pretty I'm going to define some borders. If I go to print it out right now you'll see in the print, with print preview that there's absolutely no borders to find. I select the entire amount of data and then hit this little border button here I can define the inside borders and then better define a uh, outer border here. I also want to set my headers apart from the actual data so I'm going to use a uh, shading in order to do that. I select the headers, hit this little fill color and I'm going to stick with gray because that's traditionally how we do rosters. I'm also going to embolden the text just to give it a little bit more distinction. Now you'll notice that I have dates over here and this one is 8-03-1997 and I can't tell if that's August or March. So what I want to do is better define that date and better format it. Instead of typing, retyping each date, I'll just highlight all the date fields here, right mouse click it, format cells, go to number, and then select date and I'll scroll on down to my favorite way to format these dates which is day followed by month followed by four digit year and it automatically formats it that correct way. About the same operation over here under the dollar amounts uh, these are just basic numbers right now basic integers I want to format them as dollar amounts uh, right mouse click format cells Go to currency, I can choose the amount of decimal spaces I want it to define down to. We'll stick with the traditional two. And uh, this just defines how we're going to perceive negative numbers, which we won't have any in this particular spreadsheet. Now if I take a look at my print preview again, I see that most of my, my CDC or CFC contributions have been cut off from the spreadsheet. I want to go ahead and readjust that so they are on the same page. If I go down to the bottom right hand corner and take a look at page break preview, it'll give me these blue lines and these dashed blue lines define where the page breaks are with the solid blue lines defining where the printable area is going to be for the spreadsheet. This line I'm just going to drag it over to my uh, area and sure enough it puts it all on the same page. I can go back down to the bottom right, go back to normal view and pops up back with new normal view. Now I'm going to go ahead and redefine uh, the row height. I want to make it a little bit wider in case somebody has to pencil in here. Uh, if I highlight all the rows I want to define the row height for, right mouse click, row height, 
Now 15 is, a, I believe, the default standard for the Excel spreadsheet. We're going to go with 25, just so you can get a pencil in the cell once it's actually been printed out. Now if I take a look at my print preview again, you'll notice that on page number 2, this data doesn't actually have a header associated with it, making it a little bit difficult to figure out what this cell over here actually represents. So I want to repeat the headers on each page. If I go back to home and I go to page layout, page setup, and under sheet, I can define what rows to repeat at the top. I hit this little button over here, it allows me to define what rows. Uh, in this case, I'll go ahead and put the table header in with it. And I can either hit this button or just press the enter key on my keyboard. Puts it in. I can go to print preview from here and it puts that header in on the second page. I also want to put in a page number for each one of these pages that print out and maybe even a header itself. So if I go back to page layout, page setup, and over to header footer, I can do a predefined header that it has from this drop down or I can just hit the custom header and make my own. Go ahead and change this CFC, that'll come up later. And I can insert the page number and the total number of pages. If I go to OK and print preview again, you see that my header actually pops up and the total number of pages looks like a 12. It should be actually page 1 of 2. I go back to page layout, page setup, header footer, custom header, and I'm just going to type in, I don't need any quotations or anything, exactly what I want it to say. Make sure to put in the spaces correctly. Go OK, and under my little preview there, it looks like it's coming up right. Take a look at it again, and it looks like it's coming up right there as well. Alright, I want to make these cells a little bit smaller, and the reason they're so long is because of the headers involved. So what I'm going to do to remedy that is wrap this text so I have guard right on top of hours and APFT right on top of scores. And I'll do that for this whole column header. All I have to do is hit the wrap text button and then I can readjust these and it will readjust my wrap text. I can even readjust height real quick here just so it all fits in correctly. While I'm working on this header, I want to pretty it up a little bit more. I can uh, change the justification of each one of these uh, header icons, and I'm just going to go ahead and center it real quick. And I'll even center it on the horizontal axis, or the vertical axis. And while I'm at it, I might as well bring these, which are justified to the right, and justify them to the left. Now you'll notice CDC is actually supposed to be CFC, Combined Federal Campaign, and I did that on purpose. All I'm going to do is uh, do a find and replace job on this, uh, or just show you how to do it. I can do replace all, it goes through the entire document, replaces it everywhere I have CDC, but I want to be a little bit more cautious in case I have a couple guys who happen to have CDC in their name. Just do a find next and replace. I'll find the next one and replace there. And looks like it didn't find anything else, so we're good to go there. Now that we have all the formatting taken care of, now we'll go ahead and get into equations. Now just a side note, it's probably better to get your equations done up before you get into formatting, just so you're not double down on your work. Later on, I just wanted to go over the formatting to begin with because it was a bare essential basics. So what he wanted to have happen is each squad have a tally of their total number of guard hours, the average APFT score, and the total number of CFC contributions, as well as the total number of people in each section or each squad. So in order to do that, I'm going to choose just to insert a cell here full of blanks and just uh, in order to get these equations done, I press equals sum, and this will grab the total number of the cells, and I define in between the parentheses the cells it's going to apply to. Hit the close parentheses, 
and I'm going to press tab, just go to the next square over, and it totals up that entire guard hour column. Under APFT, I need a average, so I just type in the equals average, and at this point where it gives me the suggestions, I can press the tab button and it automatically puts it in there for me. I define where it's going to start and where it's going to end just by clicking and dragging, close parentheses, and tab on over and uh, puts it in there for me. Do another sum total here, equals sum, parentheses, define the area, close parentheses, and there you go. Now you notice it gives me dot eight for the average here. I want to go ahead and round that to the next value. So I use another equation and all I'm going to do is encapsulate the average equation in the round equation. And at the end I got to define the number of uh, decimal points it's going to round to, which in this case is going to be zero. Close parentheses, enter, and I did something wrong here. Have an extra parenthesis in there. Sometimes you got to pay attention to what you're doing. That rounds it out for me. Now, in order to get the total number of people in the squad, uh, I use another equation called count A. And basically, what that does is count each block that is not empty in the specific range you're defining it for. Yeah. Now I'll just sum up the total number of uh, last names used in here, close parentheses, and it totals it all up for me. I'm now I'm going to fall back and format this in a way I want it to. I'll hit this border button, do more borders, and take out the cells in between. Okay, and uh, I'll go ahead and make it gray as well. Uh, I also want to define a sort of a bottom separate here, so let me go back into the borders real quick. And I'll choose this double line, uh, hit the sides up, and the bottom. Go to OK. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, I want to better define exactly what each, each total is in the cell itself. Now I can do that one of two ways. I can, in the cell next to each one of them, type in total whatever it is that's fine for some t some purposes in this case that's not what I really want to do uh, I'll go back in here and I'm just going to type in some text in front of it uh, using the quotation total hours put a colon, put a space, put an end quotation in order to bring this together I have to use an ampersand to combine them together. Press enter and sure enough it's there. Let me go ahead and wrap this text just to make it look a little better. Expand this out a little bit and there you go. I'll do about the same thing here and I'll choose uh, all these cells here just to make it look good and bring them up to the top. Now I don't want to do this for each one of these squads. I want to make it as easy as possible, least amount of work as possible. So I'll just copy this entire row, scroll on down below my next squad, do an insert copied cells, and all I gotta do is redefine these equations here and where they're actually defined. Now you'll notice that it basically the location where it was put in and uh, all I do is click in between the parentheses where the cells are defined, drag this over to where I want it to define a little better now and uh, same thing over here and brings it all up the correct way I can copy this again scroll on down below my next uh, squad that's not what I want to do at all. And I'll just double check to make sure these cells are lining up, and sure enough they are. I'll do that for the rest of the squads as well. Now I want this bottom border here to be bolded, so I'm just going to reformat that.
Okay, I think I'm about ready to print this out. Let me go ahead and double check my print preview and uh, take a look at page two. All right, now it's a good thing to check your print preview before you print it because you'll end up wasting a lot of paper with stupid stuff like this. Uh, I want all of the squads to be on the same sheet of paper. Uh, so I'm going to put a page break here. Let me go back to my home preview, uh, back to page break preview. And uh, I'll just take this page break here, drag it down below this squad here. And it should fix it up for me. Go print again, and it looks good. Wish it was a little bit more centered. I could probably play with the margins if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about it at this point. So anyway, you go ahead and print it out, give it to Platoon Siren thinking you've done a good job, and then he says he basically doesn't like it. What he wants to have happen is the rank and the last name and the rank and last name only to be in the same cell. No first names, no middle initials. Uh, he wants these totals here for each squad to be at the very bottom of the sheet for the entire platoon. He wants a number one through however many people we have in the platoon next to each name. And he also wants to have uh, in a separate spreadsheet basically something correlating the amount of guard hours to the average APFT to see if there's some kind of correlation between the two, maybe even a chart. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing I'm going to do is undo some of the work we've just done. So let me go ahead and delete these uh, cells here because we no longer need them. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a cell with these two values merged together. Easy way to do that is just over off to the side equals this cell ampersand this cell and you'll notice that it combines the two but it doesn't put a space in there. So I'm going to go ahead and define a, another ampersand in between quotation space quotation enter and it puts that space right there in there for me. Now I don't want to type or do that for each one of these values here so all I do is click this value here drag it down and it automatically starts reformatting it for each one of these rows. Go ahead and drag it all the way to the bottom here and you'll notice that if I actually click a cell it gives me the equation here. Uh, problem is when I get rid of these two cells it'll basically have a null value give me an error. So what I want to do is you know, maintain the value but get rid of the equation. I'll go ahead and copy all this real quick here and another cell over here I'll do a paste and I want to do a paste special. Now under paste values I'll just go ahead and click this one two three thing yeah, I'm just looking for paste values. If you had it over here, paste special, you can just choose values there, and that's the way I'm used to doing it, so whatever. Yeah, if I click on this actual cell, you see it's the actual value in the cell itself, not the formula. So I can, at this point, delete this out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and define this as rank name. Let me copy all this. I should be able to paste it in between. Now shift the rows to the right. That looks like it worked out. Readjust this. And let me go ahead and get to get rid of these uh Little initials and everything. This thing I can go and get rid of that too. Oh boy, now everything looks jacked up, huh? Alright, let's go ahead and get this uh unscrewed here. Alright, uh, I want to have uh, the same borders I have over in the middle column here, so all I got to do is uh, 
format printer and hit the column I want this new column to look like. Uh, about the same thing here, format printer, drag this over all the cells I want that to affect, and it affects it. Now again, you wanted a number right next to each one of these names here, so I'm going to insert new column here. And just starting out here, I'm going to find the cell column header, put a number pound sign, whatever, put one, and all I got to do instead of typing one through whatever is uh, hit one once, hit this little corner button, and drag it down to what I want it to affect. And I'll put a one in each one of these, but that's a cell, that's a fill copy cells, or I want to do fill series. Hit that little uh, button there, fill series, and it counts it down one through whatever. Alright, I'm going to pause it, do some more formatting, which you all have already learned. Uh, real quick, I'll unmerge this, just so I can merge it later. Alright, I got it all looking pretty. Uh, what I'm going to do now is tackle the next event, which he wanted all the stuff, all the totals at the very bottom of the spreadsheet. Scroll on down to the bottom of the spreadsheet, I'll start out working with HQ first. And I'm just going to define a mini spreadsheet. Uh, first thing I'm going to get is guard hours. And I'm going to do a sum total. And basically, I'm, what I want to do is a sum if. And say if this column here is equal to HQ or has HQ in it, then total the column over here. That's poorly explained. Hopefully me showing it will be better than me explaining. Some if I choose the range, that will be this entire duty area. He said duty. Uh, I want it to equal HQ and then star is just our wildcard character because if I don't have that wildcard character it'll not count anything because this has HQPL, I'll take it to literal. Uh, another quotation, and then I'll do the sum range itself, which will be all of this. And in reality, it'll take a look at this cell, see that it has HQ, and add this cell to the sum total. And in this case, where it doesn't see HQ, it will not add this to the sum total. Press enter. That should bring up my total guard hours, which 210 looks about right. Uh, do that same thing with the APFT average. Equal average if. Find the criteria once again, or the, the range, followed by the criteria that wild card and then where it's going to be getting its uh, range from. Don't forget to close your quotation. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing wrong now. Okay, there we go. And I'm also going to want to do like we did earlier and round this down to the, or round this to the nearest digit. And let me get the CFC contributions.
And I'm also going to get the total number of personnel. And it's just going to be equals or count if. And instead of going off the last name with this one, I'll just do HQ. That gives me the total number of priests now. Let me go ahead and format this in a way that looks good. Yeah, it looks good to me. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do this for each one of the squads here. Yeah, I'll just change the values here. Over here, I'll do a one dash one. Same thing here. Now another problem I'm running into is because of uh, the placement of these cells, the ranges have actually followed the placement. Scroll back up here redefine these ranges there we go so we did a minimum amount of work to get that first squad done and I'll go ahead and pause it create this for the next two alright got the count if totals done down here and now I want to start on my pivot table now if you notice down here we got the spreadsheet worksheets essentially and we can create a new one which will be in the same workbook, just different area. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to Platoon Roster, I guess. This one I'll go ahead and rename Pivot, because we're going to create a pivot table here. I'm going to hit Insert, I'm going to hit Pivot Table. And select the range from the tune roster and including the cell headers not the actual table header itself scroll on down select all of them and hit this button again and OK that should bring us back to this other sheet what we're gonna add is uh, the guard hours to the row labels and we're going to add in the APFT scores to the values. Now it's by default it goes in and does a sum of APFT results. We don't want that. We want to change that over to average. And it doesn't give us an option to add in a round here, so we go to number format number and change the decimal places to zero. And OK, hit OK again. And it brings it uh, rounded down to or rounded to wherever up or down. Next thing we want to do is create a chart with this oh, I'm sorry, options, pivot chart. We'll go ahead and choose this line graph where it has all the points plotted go to OK and we'll see if there's an actual correlation between APFT results and actual hours worked and in this case it doesn't because I essentially got everything on random or generated all the results randomly Next thing I'm going to do here is go back to Platoon Roster and highlight all this and just show you how to filter real quick and that's probably the last thing I'll show you how to do. Uh, let's say I want this in reverse order with numbers. Uh, I just go to Sort Filter, go to Custom Sort, and I can sort by the number. I can actually add levels here if uh, I wanted to sort by duty or sort by rank or anything else uh, after the number which in this case wouldn't work out too well and be a bad example but anyway that's a possibility uh, let's keep it at that go to OK and we'll go to largest to smallest 
Uh, go ahead and delete this level here. Okay, and it inverses the selection. You have to make sure that all the data you want sorted with this value here is selected and highlighted. If you just select this row right here, try to do a sort. In the opposite direction, you see that none of the values actually go with it. So let me go and undo that real quick. Another thing you can do is highlight this area here, go to sort, and filter, and you can actually filter by these little drop downs and select what I want to actually show. And my kids are very loud. Alright, well today we went over some Excel basics including formatting and equations and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave it in the comment box and thumbs up if this video has helped you out at all.